single mother of three, Janina Jefferson, a larger-than-life personality from nearby Big Stone Gap. She was always laughing. Her laugh was electrifying. She was a loyal friend. Oh, gosh. Janina would tell you the truth no matter what. Uh, if you didn't like it, well, that's just too bad. She was shot from the hip. She didn't play games. But she'd tell you she loved you at the end of it. 38-year-old Janina was a jack of all trades. She worked the evening shift at the Appalachia Water Treatment Plant. She loved the water plant. She really did. This was a job that she had wanted for, uh, for a long time. And she had a creative side. I love art. I always have. She painted store windows around town and had a design your own glass business, all to provide a good life for her two sons and daughter. Janina was a hard worker, and her priority was these kids. So every, everything that she did was centered around those children. Then Janita met a man. I remember her being really excited and telling me that uh, she had something going on. And, and I begged her to tell me what it was, and she said, no, I'll tell you if it works out. And work out it did. His name, Eric Jones. And he came from one of the town's well-known and respected families. Do you think his family was attractive to her, the fact that his mom is a pastor and he seems to come from a big support system? Sure. His mom is a wonderful woman, very sincere, a godly woman. Before long, Janina and Eric were head over heels. They were always laughing and cutting up, and um, and the way they looked at each other, Janina really loved him, and I really feel like he loved her. He was so caring toward her and so sweet. And sweet towards Janina's kids, too. For the couple, it was all good. Eric was going to be the new man of the house, but first, their wedding. Who was at the wedding? Oh, my gosh. It was packed. Who wasn't at the wedding? <laughs> it was absolutely beautiful. It seemed like these were two people who were meant to be together. Absolutely. Now, tragically, Janina was gone. And with no video surveillance at the water treatment plant, cops start at square one. They're interested in talking with everyone close to Janina. Everyone's a suspect. Janina Jefferson is dead shot multiple times outside her job at the water treatment plant. Did you find the gun? Gun has not been located. Cops tell our Michelle Sagona they're looking at a number of people, but one person tops their list. Everyone's a suspect, but we went where the evidence led us to, and it led us back to Eric. Eric Jones, her husband. But could it be he was the son of a pastor from a prominent family in town? He tried to be a second father to her three kids. But now he was wanted for questioning. I can place him in the area prior to the murder and also after the murder. But how? There is some video of him at a local convenience store. Investigators say right after the murder, they have Eric Jones on surveillance walking into this convenience store. What does the convenience store video show you? It shows Eric Jones walk in, um, get a six pack of beer out of the cooler, another small item, and pay for it. Uh, and then leave the store. As if? I'm gonna go home and watch the game or, you know, watch TV. Didn't seem like he was upset or, you know, there was no indicators that anything had just happened. Turns out Eric Jones was a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's got a rap sheet a mile long. What did you think about her with a convicted felon? She told me the story, but she also told me Things are different now. Let's give him a chance. You gotta give him a chance. And I thought, okay, if, if you're going to, so am I. His history of crimes, serious. Attempted murder for hire. That's right, attempted murder for hire. Who was he trying to kill? He was trying to kill a mother and her two children. Was he the one who was contracted to do the killing? Yes. The intended target, Karen Martin. So you were a single mom? Yes. How old were your children? They were seven and eight. And she knew her attempted assassin. He was friends with my cousins, and you know, I, I hung around him. Karen says she and her two kids went to sleep one night and woke up to an inferno. I called 911 and told them, I said, that my house is on fire. Wise County Sheriff's investigator Charles Curry was one of the first on the scene. So you pull up to a single family home, it's on fire, it's engulfed in flames, 
and you get reports that there are people possibly trapped inside. Yes. We made entry through the front door. We could hear screams in the back. Uh, myself and this other officer, we made our way to the back bedroom, and that's where we found all three occupants. You saved her and her children's life that night. That was our job. Is this really the first time you've recounted this in a long time? Well, uh, yeah, definitely. Why is this so emotional for you? Well, just like anybody, uh, when you have kids involved, uh, you have kids your own, you can relate. Some things you, you just don't shake off. Investigators' antennas go up when they smell gasoline inside the home and find spent matches outside on Karen's car, which had also been doused with the accelerant. It led us to believe, hey, we've got a problem here. Did Karen have any known enemies? It was determined that she did, and um, it came out it was a murder for hire case. It was determined that there was two individuals who were paid with crack cocaine to burn that residence with those three people in it. Eric Jones was one of the suspects involved. Eric was not arrested immediately because he went on the run. Then, two months later, Eric Jones' luck came to a screeching halt when he was pulled over for a traffic violation in Texas, some 1,300 miles away. Wise County Assistant Sheriff Grant Kilgore spent four days in a car with Eric, transporting him back to Virginia. What did he say to you during that time? He said very little. He slept most of the time. He seemed very unconcerned about the charges he was facing. Did he seem remorseful? Not at all. Eric Jones was indicted on seven felony charges, including three counts of attempted capital murder for hire. He eventually pleaded guilty to two felony charges and was sentenced to 20 years in prison. He served five. Was there any point in all this where you forgave him for what he did to you? His mother had told me that he was sorry for what he did, but he never personally told me. I mean, you have to forgive. It's something that I'll never forget. So Janina knew about Eric's brutal past, but was willing to look the other way. She loved him, wanted to be with him, and believed he had changed in the 15 years since he'd committed that awful crime. It seems like she saw the good and everyone did she did job. and you know what and and when I met him he was the the nicest guy ever like if you had to write down things in a, and check them off about somebody being reformed or whatever he fits that he did a lot of things for the community a lot of things at church it seemed like he had turned a new leaf yes I believe that and she forgave him yes but two years later, the cracks in the foundation began to show. April says the beginning of the end started at a 4th of July party. She said that Eric had shot a gun off at, at the block party. And, you know, he wasn't supposed to have a gun. So she was really upset about it. At what point do they separate? I think she tried one more time after that with some hesitation that they were going to stay together. And then the next thing I know, she's just, she's crying every day and saying, all right, that's it. I, got, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Janina filed for divorce. And the day it was finalized. There was an incident where he attempted to allegedly strangle her. She told me that when he came to the water plant and she said things just got out of hand. And then she felt like she needed to get a restraining order. Eric Jones was arrested for strangulation and trespassing. A judge let him out on bail. Did she come to you and say, I'm afraid for my safety because he's she stalking me? She did tell me, me that one time. She said, I've got a gun. She said, I feel like I need that for my protection. And she said, I'm, I'm really scared. I said to her, because I had seen the good side of things, I said, Janina, don't worry. It's going to be OK. But tragically, it wouldn't be OK. Janina is now dead, and Eric Jones is on the run again. Eric Jones is on the run. He's a monster in my eyes. Hiding out after allegedly gunning down his ex-wife, Janina Jefferson, outside her job at the Appalachia Water Treatment Plant. We have evidence. We feel is overwhelming evidence against Eric. The manhunt is on. Cops start searching in the secluded areas surrounding the water plant. We did ground searches, vehicle searches. 
Then we actually brought in choppers on three different occasions and then a specially equipped airplane that has some of the most sensitive photography available. Flew all those areas that we possibly could with that device. There was no indication that Eric was in any of those areas, where there was a body or, you know, they're hiding out in a cabin or tent. No sign of Eric Jones anywhere, but Jones has had practice running. He's done it before. Last time he managed to elude capture for a couple of months. He hasn't changed at all. No. Not a bit. Jones may be enjoying his freedom right now, but cops tell our Michelle Sagona one of his buddies, Jacob Roland, isn't as lucky. You've made one arrest so far. Yes, we have. An First. associate of Eric Jones's. And this person may have allegedly helped him prior to and after the incident. Is that correct? Correct. Part of his charge was the fact that he did transport him to the scene where Janina was murdered. Do you believe it's possible there could be other people out there who may have assisted him? I believe that there is, yes. Has his family been cooperative? I have spoken to his mother, God-fearing lady. She has been devastated by what has occurred. And I feel that she's being cooperative with us as, as much as she can. We wanted to talk to Jones's mom, Pastor Sandra Jones, to see what she knows about her son's whereabouts. This is the neighborhood where Eric Jones has the most contacts. In fact, his own mother lives right here. This is the truck he used to drive. We have no idea if Eric Jones's mother or any of his family members have been in contact with him, but we thought we would knock on the door just to see if we could find out. Mrs. Jones, Michelle Sagona here from Crime Watch Daily. I'm here about your son, Eric Jones. Doesn't appear anyone's home right now. Now, as Jones is so far walking free, Janina's eldest son, Trey, says he and his siblings are left to deal with what cops believe Jones savagely took from them. Are you angry? I was for a long time, yeah. What are you feeling right now? I don't know. I, uh, I do have closure. I don't let it eat at me every day, just because I know that she's in a better place. I don't want to say that I'm looking forward to being there, but I just knowing my, that my mom's watching me. Jenny and his friend April Hall is still in shock that her friend is gone. Sometimes it's just hard to breathe. breathe. This really happened. And she's haunted by the advice she gave her. Telling her, hey, don't worry, it's going to be OK. And um, Gosh, that, that's the hardest thing for me every day. I, just, I think, why did I say that to her? Why did I say it was going to be okay? Because obviously it wasn't okay. Even cops are deeply affected by this heinous crime. It's been the hardest part for you about all of this. In the sense of the murder, is this family losing a loved one. And then in the sense of him not in custody, is he's out there walking free while this family suffers. It's not fair. Give me a minute. It's been almost a year since Eric Jones went on the lamp, and the U.S. Marshal Service has made this case a priority. In the, the realm of fugitive cases we work, this has been moved up to a major case for the U.S. Marshal Service, which means extra resources, extra financial assistance, extra eyes, extra inve investigators. And Crime Watch Daily has joined the hunt, helping law enforcement get the word out to everyone watching. Eric Jones is very charismatic, and he can cross all social boundaries, from street level gang members to church members to people who have status within the, their communities and is well liked by those people. Do you think he could be dating multiple women? He is very busy in that category. He likes women and, and multiple women. Somebody is, is dating him somewhere. This guy is as dangerous as they come, and we need to get him off the streets. If you've seen Eric Jones or know where he might be, call the Wise County Sheriff's Office at 276-328-3756 